Welcome to our lesson on elastic and inelastic collisions. To understand this lesson you first need to go and have a look at the lesson on momentum or at least understand the basic rules that the universe follows in regard to momentum and we're going to do a quick revision of the rules of the universe in terms of energy. So first of all, momentum. The total momentum of the universe can never change and the total momentum of a system that does not have a force from outside acting on it cannot change. So in any collision you look at, whether it be between an x-ray and a photon or two blocks, momentum is always conserved. And not conserved? Never. That is the immutable law of the universe. However, we talked in another video about an example where kinetic energy is exchanged for another type of energy. That was when I was speaking about when you ride a razor scooter down a hill and you put your foot on the brake, that brake becomes very hot. And that's because the first law of thermodynamics states, energy can either be created nor destroyed, only transformed into another form. So it is possible in a collision for kinetic energy to become elastic energy that's a potential energy, uh, chemical energy, heat energy, light energy, sound energy. So in a collision, although the total energy of the system or the universe is concerned, the total amount of kinetic energy might change into another type of energy. So we use two words to describe two different types of collisions. When the total amount of kinetic energy is conserved, we say it was an elastic collision and when the total amount of kinetic energy was not conserved we say that is an inelastic collision and in an exam they might get you to identify whether a collision is elastic or inelastic so first let's take a look at an inelastic collision and we'll prove that it is inelastic because we'll find that the total amount of kinetic energy is not conserved. So we have two blocks, one of mass 5 and the other of mass 20. We'll set that as our positive direction for velocity and this first block has a velocity of 10, the second block has a velocity of negative 2 meters a second, so it's traveling in that direction. And when they collide, they attach to one another. 5 and 20, like so. Let's figure out first of all the speed that this block is moving. So the total momentum of that first snapshot is equal to the sum of all the individual momenti. So that's 5 times 10 plus 20 times negative 2 that is 10 kilograms meters per second. Sorry, I'll add in my units here. Always assume we work in meters, seconds and kilograms. So therefore if momentum always has to be conserved the momentum in this second snapshot has to be the same. So P is equal to 10 kilograms meters per second and that must equal MV for this combined block and we should note the mass of the combined block is 25. So 10 equals 25V, V is equal to 0 0.4 meters per second. So momentum is always conserved but Let's find out whether the total amount of kinetic energy is conserved. The total amount of kinetic energy of this snapshot of the situation is given by the, ki the kinetic energy of this block plus the kinetic energy of this block. And we'll find out soon enough that it doesn't matter that this velocity is negative because there's a squared term in the kinetic energy formula, which I'll put in here. EK equals a half mv squared and p equals mv. So let's look at 
PK. I'll move this up. Okay. The kinetic energy of this first snapshot is a half times 5 times 10 squared plus a half times 20, that's this block over here, multiplied by negative 2 squared. This comes to 250 joules and this comes to 40 joules. Actually I'll do that a little slower. That's 10, a half and 20, multiplied by 4. So 290 joules all up. The kinetic energy of this block over here, we only have to add up one mass's kinetic energy. So it's EK equals a half, 25, 0 0.4 squared. That's one half times 25 times 16 over 100 which equals one quarter times eight two joules. So we started out with a lot of kinetic energy and we've ended up with very, very little, indicating that although the total energy of the system can't have changed, we did lose some kinetic energy to other forms of energy. So we can correctly identify this collision as inelastic. And the general clue is, if the blocks stick together, I've never seen an elastic collision in which that happened. So let's look now at an elastic collision. Elastic. Now the figures here get a little more difficult. I've got my figures calculated in advance for that reason. We'll look at the same starting situation. First block, block, mass 5, V equals 10. Second block, mass 2, whoops, actually mass 20, V equals negative 2. And then a snapshot later, that first block has been sent back with a velocity of negative 9.2 and this block here has a mystery velocity which we're going to figure out. But take note, if the total momentum of the system is conserved then we will be able to correctly identify and specify this velocity and say it is the only velocity that could exist and from that we'll prove hopefully that this was an elastic collision. So we worked out before the total momentum of this snapshot is 10 and that must carry over here. So the momentum of this snapshot is also 10 which must equal 5 times negative 9.2 plus this is 20 20V 20 which comes to negative 46 plus 20V and if you add 46 to both sides you get 56 equals 20V V equals 56 on 20 which equals 2.8 meters per second so that tells us that this block here since this is our positive direction is moving in that direction, positive 2.8 meters per second. Now let's prove that the total kinetic energy has been, con been conserved. So according to the work we did before, the kinetic energy at this point in time was 290 joules. Let's look at the kinetic energy of this point in time. Just make this a little smaller, move it over, okay. So the kinetic energy total is the kinetic energy of this block 
plus that of this block. We'll put in V equals 2.8 meters per second. So that's a half, 5, negative 9.2 squared, plus a half, 20, 2.8 squared, which comes to on the calculator 211.6 plus 78.4 which totals to 290 joules. So we have the same amount of kinetic energy at this point in time as we do at this point in time here. Therefore, kinetic energy is conserved and the collision is elastic. If you're having trouble with these, do a few example questions. The two formulas we need are right here and they're not very difficult to master.